Welcome back to the Obvious Choice podcast. I was just about to call it the <laughs> one. You almost did it. Today we're talking about five little steps to make business simple again. And I'm going to go over those five steps and we're going to go more in depth into each of those five steps. But my hope is it will simplify the heck out of everything you're doing, thinking that you need to do it all. Uh, there's only five really steps that you need to focus on and the better job that you do in these five steps, uh, the better you'll do. And also I think probably like the happier and less stressful life that you'll live. Uh, but it's a matter of doing less, but better, which is a mantra that we say often here on the show, which is a mantra that I live by. The hardest part about doing less, but better is being confident that what you're doing is the right thing or is going to work good enough to be able to focus in on that thing. Uh, before we get in on that, I'm going to be away like near the end of next month. And so we were planning on it and talking about options. And one of the things that Amber suggested, which I think is a good idea, is publishing. We basically have like three episode slots to fill that I'm going to be away from. And Amber suggested putting like a greatest hits type thing. You know, some of the best episodes that we've done in the past, because we've been recording this podcast really on and off for what, three years, four years or something. So there's like 300 episodes. And so she went and found of the old online trainer show, the three episodes that I guess were what the most listened to. Yeah. Well, the, the ones that had the the most downloads that were not this, what I call the season where it's been the, just the three of us. So everything, yeah. all the other seasons. Um, so it, it was an interesting time frame to pull data for. Let's just say that. Well, I mean, a, they were from like 2020, 2021. But mm -hmm. also, um, it's hard when you look at the downloads because I don't promote, even now, I don't actively promote a lot of episodes. But when I promote an episode, it's going to jump up in views. And so it's not necessarily a metric. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. saying, like, this is the most popular. It's just like, oh, John happened to, like, email that one out or whatever. Yep. So anyway, I, uh, the reason that we bring it up is I listened back. I tried listening back to two of them. <laughs> and... I think I think all that I said to you, Amber, in the message is, "Holy crap, this is painful." Uh huh. <laughs> like they are just yeah. I said I, I said I said these episodes are painful, man. Really painful. <laughs> like they're awful. <laughs> and yet we leave them up. So this yeah. is just proof to say, do the damn thing anyway. Yeah. <laughs> regardless and learn and grow from it <laughs> I mean, I, yeah like how do you kind of find the right format i feel like what we have now is a good kind of mix of hey there's like a lot of deep education and like what makes podcasts great which is overhearing a conversation between people who really live and breathe the thing and have done mm -hmm. the thing for a long time talking about stuff that would be hard to find books or on social media like like stuff that hey, from my experience, here's what happened. Or here's a story of somebody that this happened to. I feel like it's a good mix of that. And then, of course, entertainment, because you want to have fun while you're listening to this, going for a walk or cardio or driving or wherever you're listening to this. But those ones were just too much on the weird, <laughs> fun. I think mm -hmm. every episode we said at least five times, we don't know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that joke kind of got old. Um, a little bit, yeah. Anyway. The online trainer show, uh, don't go back and listen. They're painful. <laughs> I am going to find a couple episodes to slot in. Probably they go live like early September. We're going to do greatest hits, but I'm going to pick good episodes, yeah. not the yeah. ones that you sent. Because I can't remember anything. I don't even remember what we recorded oh. yesterday. So I don't... Not good. Not good, man. <laughs> not good. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, five little steps to make business simple again. What are those five steps? This comes, this doesn't come from me, these five steps. This comes from originally, as far as I can tell, somebody named Clay Collins, who uh, was the CEO of something called Lead Pages. I don't know what Lead Pages was. Was that like a marketing software? What was it? Sounds kind like of it. like ConvertKit, but older, yeah. Like an earlier one. Yeah, I remember like I used Optimize Press back in the day for all you mm -hmm. OG internet marketers, right? Something like that. So anyway, I think this comes from him. 
and it goes the five little steps that'll be the quickest way to a successful business. Number one is, and we're going to go through all five, but I'll rip through all five quick, is one target market. Pick one specific target market that you know, understand, and that you love. Number two, one product. Pick one product that you can look the prospect in the eye and say, this thing will get you the results that you're after. Number three, one conversion tool. Pick one tool, right? Could be a strategy session, could be a webinar, could be a live event. Pick one of them that turns your prospect into a client. Number four, one traffic source. I'm going to say that again because this is the shit you're not doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm calling you out, Jim and Kelly <laughs> and Jennifer and Benjamin, especially you, Benjamin. I'm calling you out, Benjamin. Why are we calling oh. out like all the 80s kids' names? Like... <laughs> You try coming up with a whole bunch of first names on the spot. It's surprisingly hard to do. I almost called somebody Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin. Okay. One traffic source. Pick one traffic source that you can scale. A way that you can get all the leads you need. And we're going to get into all these in more detail, okay? And then number five, one year. Work at it for one year to sharpen it, polish it, and get the results you're after. He continues, the way to get a killer business is to prune, not to add too much on. Cut off options. Make business simple again. I'm going to run through those five again really, really quick. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to talk about each one specifically. One target market. One product. One conversion tool. One traffic source one year i have a story for that last one for when we get to it write it down so you don't forget it please thank you <laughs> love you <laughs> all of, all of oh my too. god yeah <laughs> allison oh. asked because you sent you sent the email for quick coach today amber oh god <laughs> and Allison asked me, she's like, so did Amber agree to the name Quickie Queen or was that just something that you said or how did that come about? She's got questions. <laughs> yeah, Allison sure she is did. concerned. She's concerned about you. <laughs> I, I appreciate her concern. I just roll with it. You know, I love a good and appropriate joke. Yeah. So I'm happy yes. to roll with it. <laughs> John and I would rather lean into it and, and mock you openly uh, in, That's in fine. a communication That's forum right. like this, but she but she actually cares. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's, she, she thinks about she, She's good looking out. <laughs> she's looking out. Okay. So number one, one oh, target yeah. market. Pick any specific target market that you know, understand, and you love. I feel like we don't need to talk about this one a lot simply because we beat this one over the head so much that it's bloodied and bruised. What I will start with before seeing what you have to add, if there's anything that either of you want to add here, is a lot of people, if we're talking about online business specifically, if we're talking about in-person, call it brick and water business, this is a little bit less important. If we're talking about online business specifically, a lot of people go from an in-person business, a brick and mortar business, to an online business. One of the major differences between the two is it is very difficult to build a business online without at least starting with hyper-specializing. Now, the exception is if you already have such a big reputation from great work that you've done in person for a very, very long period of time, you probably don't need to, like this doesn't apply to you, right? Like you've earned the right to basically say, hey, do you want to buy from me? And people say, yeah, hell yeah, I do. Most of the time, that's not the case. Most of the time when people go online, they don't have a lot of business that they're bringing with them from something that they've done in person or brick and mortar or physically beforehand. Because when you do something physically, you have the advantage, A, of being able to emote with somebody, you have the advantage of asking them questions. Like if somebody's there speaking with you, 
you can make a generalized service or product. You can make it specific to them and appeal to them over the course of that conversation. And they're probably going to come to you because you might be the only option for that thing that's within walking distance or easy driving distance to where they are. They do a Google search, you're close by, whatever, right? And so then you have an opportunity to really talk to them. Online, you're literally just never going to have an opportunity to speak to them. Like you'll never have that first conversation because what they will do is they'll search for somebody anywhere in the world. Now there's no convenience factor. It's called location bias, but now there's no convenience factor where people exist in these filter bubbles. People exist in these tiny networks that are all insulated and siloed off of one another. And as a result, you'll they'll literally just never see you in the first place. That's a major difference. So I, a lot of the people who work online take for granted and overestimate their abilities to appeal to a customer. And then when they go online, they get kicked in the teeth pretty hard. <laughs> Anything to add to that? I mean, we talk about this a fair bit, but I always hear people like, well, I built a big business and I never niche, so you don't need to niche. It's like you you were 15 years in person. Right. You own that reputation. <laughs> I love how you didn't mute your mic, but you tried to mute it. <laughs> <laughs> you did tapped I, the mic, but I guess it like didn't register your did, tap to mute it. Did that just cough then, uh, all the way into the uh, podcast? We, we, today? All, we all just got whatever uh, whatever sickness you have. You're welcome, public. <laughs> Any anything you you're welcome, Benjamin. Anything y'all <laughs> want to add to to this? Oh me, even me, I want to add something. Ahead. You know, you go ahead. Amber. <laughs> yes, yes, you, yes, you in the back with the hat. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. <laughs> Ladies first. Even if you have even if you have a ton of experience in person, if your move is to go online to get online clients, you've lost all of your leverage and what yep. what power you would have had, you know, with that. So if you're going to focus on trying to get clients through online and you haven't built up that same power already, yep. you still will want to niche. <laughs> that's it. That's that's a very good point. Yeah. I love that you made that point. It's um it, the the way that I try to explain it, mostly because I really like pie, and I just try to incorporate <laughs> things I like into all of my analogies, and I really like pie, specifically key lime pie or coconut cream pie. Cherry pie, I don't like so much. So this has nothing to do with cherry pie. Call it <laughs> coconut cream pie. If you If you consider a big pie chart, of the available people who might buy what you what you want. It's not like people replace one another. There are more than enough customers, I think, for everybody. The difference is people who exist in one slice of pie very rarely jump to other slices of pie. Like if you're like a fucking weirdo and you like cherry pie and there's an option between cherry pie and like one of the good pies, like you're still not going to eat the good pie. You're going to eat your weird fucking cherry pie. You know what I'm saying? You're just going to stay there. And so people who really like in-person service might not change, even if they love you, might not want to change to an online service because they just really, they're the type of person that really likes that type of service delivered that way. There is a different type of person who likes service delivered a different way, like me who likes a coconut cream pie. If you give me an option for coconut cream or cherry pie, I'm going to throw that cherry pie right back in your face and say, that's nasty pie. <laughs> and so you, you're targeting a different personality. There's demographics and then there's psychographics when you're targeting customer bases. There's a lot of emphasis put on demographics. Like I, you know, I, my demographic for customers is 35 year old African American females with one kid who work shift, who have, you know, shift work type jobs. Not bad, but that same person might have the same struggles, needs, 
desires, uh, um, tripping points, tripping points, that doesn't make any sense, stumbling blocks as a 50-year-old white male who kids are moved out of the house but has a sick parrot, for example. And, and totally different demographics, of course, but uh, pretty similar psychographics. Different pieces of pie. Don't eat cherry pie. You can eat cherry pie. Just if you're with me, you try to offer me a different kind of pie. Gwen, what were you going to say? Well, first, we've got a new hate group. The cherry pie distributors <laughs> of North America will be coming after us pretty soon. You've slandered their business. The vegans those were bad enough. The damn polyamorous <laughs> vegans from California who eat cherry pie. <laughs> <laughs> Joining forces. The second thing is, you know, in terms of simplifying your business, what we run into the Online Trader Academy is, number one, I get coaches who are laboring over their uh, program. Oh, man, I was up for five hours writing programs. That's a that's a niche problem that you're not having one target audience. Yeah. We, have, uh, we have coaches that say, oh, man, I just don't know what to post. That's a niche problem. You don't have a proper target audience. And we have right. coaches that say, what certification should I take? What's a good certification? Also a niche problem. You don't have a good right. target. So audience. it works backwards. So it right. works backwards. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all I got to say. Cool. All right. Let's move on because we 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 beat this one uh, to a bloody pulp. I know, Benjamin, you want to hear more about it, but <laughs> sorry, Benny. Oh, Benji. <laughs> oh, Benji. He doesn't actually like Benji. There was some weird thing that happened in his childhood. <laughs> He didn't like he didn't like Benji. Like somebody like hit him when he was young and called him Benji, and now it's like a sore spot. So don't call Benji Benji. Okay. Call him Ben, Benny, Benjamin. Ben We're gonna get Jets. one message from Ben who likes cherry pie, and he's gonna be like, <laughs> gonna blow the show up. He's not gonna be happy. He's gonna oh show my up God. at my door and knock. <laughs> hey, this is Ben. Cherry all, right. all over his nose. Number two, one product. <laughs> Pick one product that you can look the prospect in the eye and say, this thing will get you the results that you are after. You don't need more than one package. You don't need more than one way to offer your service. You don't need more than one product. A big mistake when people say, hey, you know, I'm, this thing isn't selling so well or whatever, um, I'm going to make a lower priced offer or I'm going to create an automated service where you know, I'm going to write this book. Like, again, I'm going to tell you right now, don't write a book. <laughs> As somebody who's written a lot of books, I do not recommend it unless you absolutely can't not write that book because you just love pain and suffering. Uh, it, don't write a book. Your issue is not that you need another product. Your issue is that you haven't made your initial product better and you're avoiding the hard work of diving into the details of that thing and making it great and figuring out what problem it solves and engineering it to solve that problem. You only need one thing in business. You don't need to add all these extras. You don't need to offer somebody your fucking 20% off supplement coupon code because that's a way to scale your business and make more money is by, um, you know, trying to make passive revenue by all of these other ways that you can make money because they're buying supplements. It's like, yo, they got to buy a lot of supplements for it to make the same amount of money as one program you sell. And it's all just a distraction. Well, it's self-sabotage, really right? Like Ren, like you see this all the time, I would assume too, like with students, they create the additional packages because they don't have confidence in the main package. They want to be able to be like, but wait, I have this other thing, yeah. but wait, I have this other thing because the right. price that they know that they should be asking for scares the hell out of them. Yeah. And so they don't even put up a, a good coaching fight for that main package. They just default to the cheaper <laughs> package because it freaks them out to ask for proper pricing. If you want, if you want to go somewhere where 
people have a lot of confidence in their packages. Uh, I recommend you go to a nude beach. <laughs> like the one that I was at over the weekend. <laughs> You'll see a lot of men who have a lot of confidence in their packages. Now, I'm no judge of packages. I haven't seen a lot of them. Well, I have seen a lot of them now as of a couple of days ago, but I really have no way of knowing what's an attractive or good looking package or not a good looking package. What I can say uh. is that uh, confidence in one's package seems to make it impact. Uh, but right. what is the biggest problem that your people have? What is the best thing that you can do to solve that problem? A customer who hires you, hires you to solve a problem. It does not matter whether your thing is cheap or not cheap, automated or not automated. The only thing that you get judged on is whether you successfully help them solve their problem or not. If your thing is very cheap or automated, you have a much worse chance at solving the problem, which is going to make your entire business harder. Because if you can actually solve somebody's problem, well, they're going to be a success. Other people are going to ask them how they did the thing. They're going to recommend you. All of a sudden, this flywheel starts. If you have to generate every single customer that you get because you're not getting people good enough results, because you're not charging enough to be able to offer the service to get people good enough results, you're playing the game of business on hard mode. And it's okay saying to somebody, totally cool if you can afford this look. But what you're trying to achieve, the only way that I really feel confident that I know that I can help you achieve this is with this package, is with this service. And, and if that doesn't work for you right now, totally fine. I totally understand. I wish you the best. You know, ideally, here's some free materials or here's whatever something that you could do on your own. And if you're ever ready to work together, I'm here. There's going to be a lot of people who will take a step back when you make a, a statement like that. And they're going to say, eh, maybe I can afford it after all. Because the confidence that you have shown there to be able to turn a business away and saying, I'm the expert. I know that I can get you the results. Here's what it takes. And if you're not able or willing to do that, I can't work with you. It's a lot of confidence in that, isn't it? It's very confident. And people will like work their way up. Like in our mentorship, the amount of people that are working their butts off every day to be at the point where they can take our mentorship and qualify for it. Because we've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people that weren't ready for it yet. And, uh, and I think that's a good position to be in business-wise. Anything else to add on this idea of one product? As he sips pop from his chilled can. Yeah, it's not so chilled anymore. It's kind of hot. <laughs> okay, nothing. One conversion tool. Thanks, guys. Good, really? job. good <laughs> job, John. You nailed it. I listened, to this, I listened to this podcast last night. And it was this guy, it's normally like a really like fun, like outgoing, like jovial, energetic podcast. And they even said beforehand, they're like, this guest was great. But we need to say before we start, he's very different than previous guests. That we've had. <laughs> and the end, um, like the final thing is like, you know, we, we heard from a mutual friend uh, that you're, uh, that you're just, you're not, you're not bullish on, on AI, on artificial uh, intelligence at all. Uh, is that true? And he's like, yeah, it's true. <laughs> and they're like, oh, so why, you know, why, why, why is that? What, what is it that, that you know, what they say? I just don't think that it's that big of a deal. Like, <laughs> okay, well, thank you for listening to the podcast. <laughs> Anthony, you have been styled. It was great. It was great. Well, but it was it was perfect the way that it was delivered because it was just like it's just not like I can't give you some long drawn out answer. It's just it's it's overblown. It's obvious. It's, it's overblown. Like, like how do you not see this? Like it's 
You know, oh, you, like, it's just, it's, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, number three, one conversion tool. Okay, so what's a conversion tool? We're working kind of, we're actually working um, backwards here a little bit in a way that we don't normally. So a conversion tool is not the way that you generate a lead. It's the way that you convert the lead. So once somebody has already expressed interest in some way or put their hand up, what is it that you do so that they hand over a credit card or Venmo you money or whatever it is? And so a conversion tool could be something as simple as a button on a website that says buy now. Like it could be a written sales page. It could be a phone call. Like it could be a full on sales call. It could be a webinar. Uh, it could be a live event where you convert people from a live event that you host. It could be any of these things, really. But the important part of this whole conversation is choose one because they all can work, but none of them are going to work unless you really work at them. And the important thing is to choose one that will best support, I would say, your, your skill set and your natural attributes. The only corollary to this is, you know, if you're selling like high ticket stuff, it probably needs to be over the phone. But a lot of it does work and none of it you're gonna do particularly well the first time or the second time or the third time or the fourth time or the 20th time, but you're gonna get better over time. And that's why it's important to say, all right, this, this thing is how I'm converting people to become customers of mine. In, in choosing that, you can do just that one thing and keep doing it better and better and better and better. Could be the conversion optimization on your page, the placement of the button, the words, the copy, could be the way that you conduct the phone calls, could be the way that you get somebody from, call it social media, to a phone call. You know, what are your communication steps? And we have this, I mean, we have this with our mentorship. We're always working on the ways that we're talking to people and DMs that expressed interest. We're always, once somebody books a call, the, the <coughs> system to remind them about a call via text message. When, again, it didn't mute your microphone, so it I don't know mute? what's going on. There. No, no, we heard that again. No, wow. we heard you again. I don't, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Can you hear me now? You, st you still hear me? Yeah, we got you. It's yeah. on mute. Yeah, yeah. It's not muting. Oh, Your mute sorry. button is working. All right. Well. Oh, that's fine. Uh, anything to add on this, guys? Uh, you know, uh, it's it shouldn't be too complicated. The point is, just do one thing. Like, if that's not obvious yet. Do one thing and keep getting better at that one thing and the people you learn from and what you study and the metrics that you're measuring all are around that one thing that's focused around that one thing. I, I, think, I think here, and probably this is a theme throughout these five topics, these are places where shiny object syndrome really throws people way yep. off the path, right? Like we... We get mm -hmm. these questions all the time. Are you guys using Stripe? Who's using Stripe? Or who's using PayPal? Is PayPal better? Who's it like? And it, it doesn't right. really matter. Just give it the time to get good at it, right? You're not going to, you're not going to overcome your inefficiency by utilizing a different device in life ever, in every category ever, of life. Ever. It's always ever. going to be you just getting better at something and dealing with the fact that you suck at first and everybody does everybody does just just own that and you just probably ties into the year thing at the end of this at these five things but that that that's my thought that's what that's what we see a lot in in the context of the organization we all work in it's just people looking for that silver bullet magic thing genie in the bottle and it's it's not out there like there's there's no better there's just different well, and the worst thing you could possibly do is, is to confuse someone who's interested in buying, right? And so when you have all of these different ways to convert, it creates confusion. Am I buying the same thing if I buy it this way versus that way? You know, and so just funnel everybody and make it stupid obvious, you know, what they're supposed to do and eliminate any potential confusion. 
one of the best lessons that I ever learned in regards to business over the great scheme of my life, this isn't one of the most important lessons, but in terms of business, <laughs> is anytime you want somebody to do anything to take a step, you always have to, number one, make it very clear exactly what you want them to do. And number two, tell them the reason why you want them to do it. Yes. And anytime you want somebody to click a button or message you or show up for a call or open an email or read the email or click on a link in the email, right? Every single thing. So, you know, when you send an email, the email subject line needs to be compelling enough for somebody to open up the email. The first line of the email needs to be compelling enough and tell somebody why they'll benefit from reading that email. The second line needs to do the same thing. Then you have to understand that people will probably scan an email. And when they scan an email, there needs to be enough compelling bits to get them to stop at certain points and read certain bits. They're probably not going to read it top to bottom. If you want somebody to click a link in an email to take some kind of an action, you need to say very clearly, click this link or make it very clear exactly what action they should take and why they will benefit from taking it. it. It's one of the most important lessons. And it's just the simplest reminder ever. Anytime you want anybody to do anything, exactly how to do it. One big reason why they'll benefit from doing this it. This is one of my, my big pet peeves when we do social media audits, especially with like Instagram and they have a link tree. And they have 30 different links in the link tree. Yeah. And you have no idea what button does what and why you should click on it. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's clicking one of your links. That exactly. One. You, really, you, really, you really think that their problem is they're deciding which of your links to click? Yes. Uh, why don't you solve that problem first? Okay. Number four. Number four. One traffic source. Holy sweet baby Jesus, Benjamin, have <laughs> one traffic source. Here, here we go. Oh my God, Benji. Uh, can I call you Benji? Benji, no, holy no, you, crap. We've established You're trying you to tra cannot, traumatize him. You cannot yeah. call him Benji, John. We've already established that. It's been. It's abusive. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Pick one thing. You can expand out afterwards. You're not Gary fucking Vaynerchuk. <laughs> You are one person who is doing this on the side in the hopes that it will generate business for you. Pick one platform. I don't care if a new platform just came out, i.e. Instagram <laughs> threads. It does not matter. Jason asked me, you know, Jason Maxwell, head of, our, head of our mentorship, asked me, he's like, yo, did you sign up for threads yet? What do you think? Is it going to replace Twitter? My response was very simple. It was... It's just another thing, <laughs> period. That's all it is. Is it going to replace something? No. Is it going to eliminate, destroy something? No. It's just another thing. So dramatic. <laughs> I mean, we got to hook Benji. You know, he always drops off. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. he's Benji there. fell asleep 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Benjamin's driving. I hope that he didn't fall asleep. <laughs> we should find a Benjamin who listens to this podcast. Uh, or not. He probably doesn't like us. Probably not. Not anymore. But the idea is one traffic source. And when you find that traffic source, whatever it is that works best, there's an episode. Actually, Amber, do you mind um, finding the, the number of this episode? It was, it was the episode where you said, I think that's my favorite part of the book. It was how to decide uh, what fuck you should do i think was the title and um and because right at the end of it right at the end of that episode that i recommend at the end of this one for you to listen to next there's a there's a three question framework a process for you to rapidly test and it works really well with rapidly testing things like what social media platform should i do what content should i create all of these things and it's a way to very rapidly in a week or two um test which of these is right for you because they all kind of work and they're all right for different people. So I can't make it, I can't say Twitter is better than Instagram is better than LinkedIn. I mean, they're all fine and they all 
basically work or like local networking or um, who is it that I spoke to somebody in a, in a mentorship on one of the hot seats yesterday I was speaking to. And he, he mentioned in his intro in the hot seat, he mentioned, he said four different times that he wanted to, uh, it was something about community. It was, it was different words, but it was some combination of like, give back to community, be a part of the community. He said straight up, he doesn't really like social media. He wants to, you know, be a part of the community. And so his traffic source, what we established on the hot seat really quick was, yeah, you don't need to do social media. Like he was a, a, a professional athlete. He's in Ireland. So he was a professional athlete in one of the weird sports that they play out there. And what they, what he's going to do is with a buddy organize uh, free kids like on a Saturday, like he's just going to try it. Like I said, I was like, I have no idea how well this is going to work, but it's worth trying. Worst case scenario, it'll be kind of fun and you'll get to know some people. And so I was like, next weekend, here's what you do. You're going to print 50 to 100 pieces of paper on an eight and a half by 11. And you're going to offer uh, kids free training for the sport. Like Saturday, like Saturday mid-morning, when all parents are wondering what the heck to do with their stinking kids. Hey, I was a professional here. I live in the neighborhood. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to give back. It's going to be a, a free camp. Donate a couple pounds to this charity. Pounds, you know, Ireland. Right? Donate a couple pounds to this charity uh, if you want. But but really, it's it's free. And at the same time, my partner is going to be running a workout for the parents, a boot camp for the parents for anybody who wants to join. And they're just going to do it in a local park. Right? That's the traffic source. Like one traffic source. I don't know if that's going to work. I don't know what it's going to turn into. I don't know if it's going to turn into anything. But if they run it once and they raise a bit of money, well, then you call all of the local news reporters the next week. And you say, hey, we're getting the community active and we're donating to charity. You want to do a story on this? Right. Starts to go and go and go. And uh, it just keep getting better week after week after week of doing these things. And it will turn into something. The point is motion begets motion and motion dictates inspiration. Once you start doing something, once you are in motion, you start to figure it out. You start to make it yours. If you spend all your time thinking about this thing or changing all of these different things, you'll never get to the point where you're in motion for long enough to really establish any kind of inspiration. The other aspect of this one traffic source is, and this goes into number five, which is one year. Previously, I've said six months, you know, minimum six months, six months to a year. Once you've decided these five things, that's what you do a minimum, minimum of six months. I don't give a fuck what Randy, the IG real expert says. It just doesn't matter, Randy. Your advice is good, Randy. I get it. You know how to make jump cuts better than I do. Doesn't make a fucking difference. Because I'm focusing on these five things. And in focusing on these five things, I understand that there are different skill sets within these and different elements of these that I need to focus on. For example, if you're going to be presenting in any way with your face on camera, well, it might make sense to get better at public speaking. Maybe go do some improv comedy courses, for example. Get better at that skill set of presenting. The same with writing. Maybe take some creative writing lessons at the same time. If you know that this is what you're going to do, improve your intangible skill sets and your tangible skill sets towards that thing. Your networking is dictated by it as well. 
the people who you meet, the people who you support, call them your targets for people you want to reach out to are people who are more notable on those platforms. There are people who are famous on Instagram that nobody knows who they are anywhere else. It's just how it is. And so if you want to become famous on Instagram for a certain type of thing, those are the people who you want to get to know, right? You're going to buy their stuff. You're going to interact with them. If they put on events, you're going to attend their events and you're going to buy the VIP tickets so you can shake hands with them and give them a high five. Because you're so specific on who you're networking with and who you eventually want to work with and collab with because you've established that that's your pathway. And then you get into conversion from that place as well. There are ways to convert from different platforms within different things. You know, this example of this guy from Ireland, like how do you convert from a free event like that? I don't know. But I would be thinking about that because it's going to be very different in how you can vote from like an Instagram story, for example. You know, at what point at the beginning of the session, at the end of the session, do you ask for information from the participants? What information do you ask for? How do you communicate with them afterwards? Do you do some offer? Do you do a raffle, for example, where there is a free month of training or there is a piece of fitness gear that if you put in your name and information, you win it. And then you call everybody and you say, oh, so sorry, you didn't win the kettlebell, but you won our consolation prize. You get a free access to this seven week challenge to have our services. And all of a sudden now they're like, I don't know what that is but I'd be working on it. And that's why choosing one traffic source and working on this thing for one year makes such a difference. Because when you do less, you can focus on all of the important bits of that. And that, Benjamin, is how you become Amber, what? You'd like that obvious choice. The Very obvious nice. choice. Very Thank nice, you. Amber. <laughs> I, thought, I thought she was getting glazed over there for a second. I was like, oh no. I had to, I had, you know, my, my brain panics when you call on me. <laughs> there, there's a there's a famous quote of a student like saying, I'm not dumb. My brain's just panicking. And that's exactly how my brain works. And so I know a lot of things, but as soon as oh, you man. ask me for information, my you brain just that. data dumps everything. So you nailed it, man. First five seconds, she was shut down, man. I was like, I was scared for a second. I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Benjamin is going to bring this, going to throw this right in my face. He's going to mess it up. The look was almost like, am I Amber? That's that's the look that you gave. Am I Amber? Existential crisis. You did a great job, though. Can you imagine if Benjamin and Pam ever met each other? Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. It's a disaster. Oh, the polyamorous vegan community <laughs> in California. We just have a conniption. The subsidiary of the cherry pie production industry of North America. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's oh, offended. Well, well, cherry pie Benjamin. This is a good list. I, I really yeah, enjoy yeah, it. It's a good list, right? Yeah, it simplifies things a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good list. Uh, anything to add to any of this? Are we done? Where are we, where, where are we at here? To, to add on to that last one, okay. not to add any actual value, but just because well, it's mean, funny. You don't, need to, you don't need to start with that. Like you don't need to leave with that. <laughs> well, <laughs> just... I'm, I'm obnoxiously honest. Sometimes I have to tell on myself it's a thing. So I'm terrible at lying, but, uh, I was in a, a group for, um, people with ADHD and they, you know, own businesses and whatever. And this, this woman writes a post upset because she did not have a roster full of clients after launching her business a week ago. Okay. <laughs> and like, um, I, you know, you ever start like typing something out all and the then time. you delete it all, all because time. you're all like, you know what? No. All the time. <laughs> it's, 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 it's therapeutic to me to do that, actually. Um, <laughs> oftentimes, when I'm like going through Reddit, like the personal trainer Reddit is just painful. Oh, God. Uh, it is. I will, I have to write something, but I never write it in the like thing. I always just mm-hmm. like pop open my notes and write it in there. 
It's like if I'm going to send nice. somebody important an email, I never mm -hmm. put the email address in first. That's yep. the last step. Just in case. Yep. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> My, my favorite AI thing, and I'm not really big on AI, but there's one thing that I really love called politepost.net. And what you do is if you have an interaction that you need to respond to and you're just super angry and you wanted to call them all the names and say all of this awful stuff, you type the email that you want to send into there and you okay. hit convert or whatever, and it turns it into a professional <laughs> message back. And that is super cathartic as well. So you can say all this awful stuff that you feel like you need to say because it feels good, but obviously it's not good for business to do it. Right. Um, and it gives you the professional version out, which is fun. That's funny. I love That's it. funny. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to the Obvious Choice Podcast. As always, if you know how to review a podcast, uh, please review our podcast. I can't tell you how to do it. I don't know how to do it. But if you know how to do it and you do that type of thing, please review our podcast. I'm told it helps. And you know what? Please share this episode with one person today. That's all I ask. Send this to one person. You're thinking of them right now. Ideally, their name is not Benjamin. And send this to at least one person and say, hey, you know, I listened to this. I liked it. I, I think that you'll benefit. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe as well. I'm going to recommend another episode for you to listen to right now if you are thinking of listening to one. Amber, I found the number. Um, okay. uh, number Episode number 66. It's called Choosing What the Fuck You Should Be Doing. We talked a lot in this episode about the importance of doing less but better, of focusing in. We gave you know the five little steps to running a great business. The hardest part of this is A, choosing the things you're going to do and then B, being confident in your choices. Episode 66 is a lot more about how to be confident in those choices. And then it ends with a process and a very simple three question framework where by the end of it, you'll say, all right, here's how I'm testing for myself. Here's exactly the process I'm following. And I know exactly when I've landed on the right thing for me. So that's episode 66, choosing what the fuck you should be doing. I hope that you enjoy it. And as always, talk soon. Bye-bye. Randy, you want to mute your mic?